Okay, so for this example, we're going to talk about two planes, and we want to know how they are intersecting or relating to each other. And what could happen is the planes could be intersecting, and when they do, they make a line, as you can see here, or they could be parallel, or they could be the same plane, which we call co coincidence, which would be on top of each other. And if they're going to be parallel or the same plane, that means this normal vector, which is here, would have to be a scalar multiple of this normal vector. That would mean they're either parallel or the same plane. So if I want to check out these planes, what's going to happen, I'm going to go find their parallel vectors, or their normal vectors, rather. And so let's, the normal vector for the first plane, for, so, so for plane 1, the normal 1 is equal to 2 minus 1, 1. For plane 2, the normal is going to be 1, 2, minus 1, which comes from the leading coefficients. It is clear to see, say, that normal 1 does not equal any multiple of normal 2. Therefore, they are not parallel, therefore not same plane. The only thing they could be is intersecting, so they must be intersecting. Okay, so now, if I want to find the angle between the two planes, then what I want to do is take a look at, let's take a look at this diagram here. I've graphed the two planes that we have, and we want to find the angle that exists between them. Well, also on this diagram, I've gone and I've placed some normal vectors, and I've shown them as normal lines, actually, so we can see them better. And if I think about the angle between these normal vectors here has to be the same as the angle between these two planes. And perspective-wise, it's hard to see what that, what that is saying, but this angle here will be the same as this angle here. So let's go and find the angle between the two normals, which will be the angle between the two planes. So to find the angle between the two normals, I'm going to use the idea of the dot product. I'm going to say that normal 1 dot normal 2 is equal to the magnitude of normal 1 times the magnitude of normal 2 cosine the angle between them. And so normal 1 is 2 minus 1, 1 dot 1, 2 minus 1, which will be the ma magnitude of normal 1 is 2 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 1. Normal 2 is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 1 squared cosine theta. Well, continuing through here, I get 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 1. This is square root of 6, square root of 6, which gives me 6 cosine theta. And so cosine theta is equal to negative 1 over 6. If I think about negative 1 over 6, that will be an obtuse angle. I typically want the acute angle. Either one will work. But if I want to find the acute angle, I go cosine inverse 1 over 6. And so the angle is 80 point four degrees is the acute angle between the planes. Because that's the an acute angle between the normals, which is the acute angle between the planes. All right, so now we want to take a look at find the intersection of the two planes. Well, and then D part, do it by a different method. So we're going to do the same question twice. And so let's copy what we have here. I'm going to clone this page, and we're going to clear the ink. All right, so I want to find the intersection of these planes. Well, with if I do simultaneous equations here, which means I'm solving the equations, and I'm going to try to eliminate a variable. So to eliminate a variable, I have x plus 2y minus z equals 0. I can straight away from here add these equations up and I'm going to lose a variable so I get 
3x plus y. The z's cancel. The z subtract away will equal to 1. And so now I have one equation, one variable. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to let... There's an infinite amount of points in the intersection, so I'm going to introduce a parameter. I'm going to let y equal t. And so if y equals t, I get 3x plus t is equal to 1. And I know that 3x is equal to 1 minus t, and x will be 1 third minus 1 third t. I have y, I have x. Now to find z, I take these two values and I plug them into either one of these equations. So if I plug it into this second plane, I get 1 third minus 1 third t plus 2t minus z equals 0. Rearranging the equation and being careful with our algebra here, I know that I bring the z over. z is equal to 1 third. 2t minus a third t is going to be equal to minus plus, sorry, plus 5 thirds t. This is my z component. So when I put it all together, my equation of the line will be the point is 1 third 0 1 third plus some parameter t negative 1 third 1 and 5 thirds. So this is the equation of our line. I could tidy up a little bit and I can take my direction vector and multiply it by a scalar value and so I could say that it's lambda negative 1 if I multiply by 3 3 and 5 and then I have nice values there alright so that is one particular method that we could use for finding the intersection of the two planes but D part wants us to find a new way of doing it and so if I consider this diagram here, I'm looking for this line there. And so what happens if I think about the two normals that exist, and maybe it's easier to see here, if I think about the two normals that exist, I'm looking for the line that goes here. This line, the direction of that line, is perpendicular to both of these normals. And so if I find the cross product of my direction vectors, or the normal vector of the planes, that will, give me the, that will give me the line, that the, the direction of this intersecting line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the cross product of these two vectors. I'm going to cross i, j, k. I'm going to cross 2, negative 1, 1 and 1, 2, negative 1. So normal 1 cross normal 2 will give me hiding i, I go negative 1, subtract 2 is negative 3. Doing j, I get 1, subtract a negative 2 is 3. Let me do this first one over again. I'm hiding i, I get 1, subtract 2, uh, yes. I go 1, subtract 2 is negative 1. If I do j, i, j, I get 1, I get 1 plus 2 gives me 3. And then for k, finally, if I hide the k, I get 4 plus 1 is 5. So here is my direction vector of this line in here. It should be the same direction vector 
from the previous example in here if I've done my algebra correct. And as you can see, negative 1, 3, 5 is the same direction as the cross product of the normal. So I have my direction vector. Now my trouble is I need to find I need to find a point. I mean, any point on this line, anywhere, will suffice. And I know that on the line that exists, there is a time when x will be 0, and then y and z are fixed. There will also be a time when y is 0, x and z are fixed. So we can start off by letting x be 0, or letting y be 0. I'm going to let y be 0 only because I know what's going to happen, but I could let any of the variables be zero here. It doesn't matter. When that happens, and actually it doesn't even have to be zero, it can be any value I want. I just can let it happen because for one of the variables, it will always have corresponding other variables. So if I plug in zero, I get 2x plus z equals one, and I get x, well, plus zero times two, I get minus z is equal to zero. And now I have simultaneous equations with x and z. Now I'm going to solve those. It's easy to add those up. And when I do, I get 3x equal to 1, so x equals 1 third. I can, now I can also, another, uh, so I could solve now, I can go 1 third minus z is equal to zero. And so z is also equal to one third. And so the point I can have to make my equation of a line, r is equal to one third, zero, one third, plus t, negative one, three, five. And if I go back to my previous example, you will see that it is exactly the same point. The reason why I chose y to be zero is so that I would get the exact same point. I could have chosen x to be zero, and then this point would have been different, but it would have been just a different point on the line. So we have two methods to finding intersections of two planes. Um, both are fine depending upon what equations you get. They give you different advantages or disadvantages.